BAE successfully experiments with a new sub-caliber artillery long-range projectile with enhanced lethality, reaching 110 kilometers. Is rocketry about to be replaced by artillery in the future? On April 15, 2023, BAE Systems announced that the company, in cooperation with the U.S. Army, successfully conducted test work on a new ultra-long-range artillery projectile at the end of last month. The test reportedly took place at the White Sands Missile Range. The test site, located in New Mexico, is not only the largest U.S. military facility but also the site of the first missile experiments, with the world's first atomic bomb, Trinity, being successfully tested here, and the first test launch of a E-2 rocket captured by the U.S. military after World War II. It can be said that from nuclear weapons to rocket missiles, from laser weapons to electromagnetic rail guns, the vast majority of the U.S. military's highly sophisticated weapons are tested here. So what is the origin of this new artillery shell from BAE Systems? Can it be tested at a site that represents the highest level of U.S. military technology? According to BAE Systems, the ammunition is called Subcaliber Artillery Long Range Projectile with Enhanced Lethality. Does the name sound like I know every word, but I just can't read them all together? No matter, I will do a detailed introduction next. So what's so great about this shell? It is powerful in the range. The range of conventional 155mm artillery ammunition is generally around 20 to 30 kilometers. The M777 howitzer, for example, has a range of 24 kilometers, the ERFB has a range of 30 kilometers, and the M982 Excalibur has a range of no more than 40 kilometers. This new shell from BAE Systems, on the other hand, is capable of reaching an impressive range of 110 km with the same 155mm caliber. This experiment was done by the 155mm XM907E2 self-propelled gun, which not only flew far but also hit its intended target accurately. You know that the M142 has a range of only 50 to 70 km when firing the standard M26 rocket and a range of only 300 km when firing the Atoms missile. This means that howitzers using this new BAE ammunition have surpassed HIMARS in terms of range. Previously, rocket artillery could cover the fire range. In the future, I am afraid that will soon be replaced by artillery. So how difficult is it to increase the range of traditional artillery ammunition? Why is it so difficult to break the 100km limit? In general, there are several ways to increase the range of artillery. Increase the initial velocity of the projectile increase the external ballistic acceleration, and improve the shape of the projectile to reduce the flight resistance. The muzzle velocity is the velocity of the ammunition in the gun's chamber. After the gun is fired, the shell's belt is tightly engraved on the rifling, accelerated by the gunpowder gas, and reaches its maximum velocity at the moment of discharge. To increase the initial velocity of the shell, either the acceleration or the acceleration time should be increased. The former requires an improvement in chemical materials, while the latter requires an increase in the length of the gun's barrel, which means an increase in the gun's multiplier, the ratio of barrel length to caliber. For example, the M109A1 gun was 23 times the caliber, while today's M109A7 is 39 times the caliber. The range was also increased from 14 km to 24 km. However, the barrel length cannot be increased indefinitely, and the howitzer has grown from its past critical value of 20 to 30 times the caliber to the limit of 60 times the caliber. If we continue to increase the length of the barrel, we will inevitably have to increase the strength of the barrel and even all the components of the gun. The total weight will be greatly increased, the mobility of the gun will be reduced, and the life of the barrel and the whole gun will be greatly shortened. Increasing the external ballistic acceleration, on the other hand, means increasing the velocity of the projectile as it travels through the air. This state of the gun is affected by a combination of external conditions, including but not limited to air density and humidity. These are collectively referred to as external ballistic resistance. Since the barrel diameter cannot be increased indefinitely, increasing the external ballistic acceleration is the main means to extend the range of artillery in the world today. In this part of the gun, if you want to increase the range, it is only to increase the speed and reduce the resistance. There are two main ways to increase the external energy of the projectile or change the external structure of the projectile. Changing the shape of the projectile is relatively simple, 
as it reduces air resistance by changing the aerodynamic shape of the warhead. The most classic example is the date bomb. Most of the artillery shells used by various countries earlier were cylindrical shells, and the actual range of these shells would be much less than the theoretical range due to the frictional resistance of air in flight. The actual range of a 155mm cylindrical shell is only about 30% of the theoretical range. The date bomb has a more rounded shape than the cylindrical shell, and its length and diameter are larger, from 4 times the length and diameter ratio of the ordinary shell to 5.5 to 6 times, which is a low resistance shape of the extended range shell, and the range is increased by 30% compared to the cylindrical shape. It is relatively more difficult to increase the external energy, from easy to difficult are the base bleed projectile, rocket extended range, and ramjet extended range. The base bleed projectile is a gas device added to the tail of the projectile to fill the low pressure area at the end of the projectile through the bottom powder exhaust, thus reducing the air resistance caused by the air pressure difference to achieve the purpose of increasing the range. The range can be extended from more than 20 km to 30 km with ordinary ammunition. The rocket extended projectile is equipped with a real rocket motor at the end of the projectile, and when fired, it starts to be propelled by the initial launch charge in the chamber like a normal shell, and the rocket motor at the rear of the projectile starts to work to provide thrust after flying a certain distance from the muzzle. This violent pileup of power could have a range of 50 to 70 kilometers. The ramjet extended range projectile can be considered a further extension of the rocket extended range projectile. Ordinary rocket range extenders are equivalent to artillery rockets, with huge rocket motors taking up too much space. In contrast, the ramjet engine does not need to carry its own oxidizer, and the entire projectile is designed as a ramjet engine, and the projectile and engine are highly integrated into one, which is basically equivalent to a gun-launched missile. However, because of the need to integrate a whole engine into a small shell, the air inlet, nozzle, engine combustion chamber, etc. need to be crammed into a small space. At the same time, the stamping engine needs to face many unfavorable factors, such as a high load, in the process of work. When the size of the stamping engine is small to a certain extent, the strength of its material and structure can withstand the high-speed airflow and the test of super temperature and pressure before and after the gun chamber, as well as how to maintain the stability of various electronic devices inside the shell in high-speed flight. These are difficult problems to overcome. Its design and manufacturing are extremely difficult, and its performance is unstable. So far, there is still no ramjet in the world that can really serve on large caliber guns. The Ramjet 155, jointly developed by Boeing and the Norwegian Nordic Ammunition Company, and the XM 1155 Ramjet, developed by Raytheon and TNO of the Netherlands, are the only two being tested in the US military. Both shells have a range of more than 100 kilometers but have the obvious disadvantage of being expensive and having a low charge. The BAE system subcaliber artillery long-range projectile with enhanced lethality is the product of a joint competition with Boeing and Raytheon for the US Army's long-range precision strike program. The program envisions several future generations of US Army long-range strike equipment, including the XM-1299 155mm self-propelled gun, which is being tested today. To further enhance the gun's operational capabilities, the US Army included the 155mm long-range precision-guided artillery round, called the XM-1155, in the LRPF's development program. In order to win the final order, three well-known arms companies, BAE, Boeing, and Raytheon, all participated in the competition. So what is the difference between BAE, Raytheon, and Boeing when compared to the same 100 km range? The most intuitive difference is that it does not use the extended range technology of the ramjet engine. This is quite impressive, knowing that with the current technology, the only way to achieve a range of more than 100 km is to install a ramjet engine. Of course, there is also the LRMP shell developed by General Atomics, but it is a gliding shell, and the gliding method with folding wings is not suitable for high muzzle velocity, and the gliding flight will inevitably increase the flight time of the shell, which is not as good as the first three companies' solutions for hitting time-sensitive targets. Since BAE's shells do not use ramjet engines to increase range, what technology is used? 
I couldn't find any information about it even after checking a lot of sources. The official website of BAE only emphasizes its excellent range but not its technical principles. At present, we can only call it black magic technology. However, although the core technology is not much public for secrecy reasons, we can still find some clues from other details. For example, the key point in the name, subcaliber, as the name implies, refers to the diameter of the shell being smaller than the caliber of the gun ammunition. The opposite is also true of supercaliber ammunition, which, as the name implies, refers to ammunition with a diameter larger than the caliber of the gun. The most famous example of supercaliber ammunition is the various portable rockets. The World War II German Army was equipped with the Iron Fist anti-tank rocket, one of the originators of modern supercaliber artillery shells. There are also RPG rockets that are now common in security warfare and are typical of supercaliber ammunition. Its characteristics are a smaller initial velocity and greater power, making it suitable for close-range damage to kill targets. The most typical example of subcaliber ammunition is APFSDS, which destroys armored targets with its own impact. In the same conditions, subcaliber armor-piercing ammunition can penetrate deeper than the same type of armor-piercing ammunition of the same caliber, increasing penetration depth by one to two times. And because the subcaliber munition has a smaller diameter and volume of the flying body, its weight is significantly lighter than that of full-caliber munitions, and the subcaliber munition has the advantage of muzzle velocity with the same launch charge. BAE subcaliber artillery long-range projectile with enhanced lethality is capable of striking long-range targets with extreme accuracy using the 155mm gun. Attacks can be completed on stationary and moving targets at ranges in excess of 110 km. The other key point in the name, enhanced lethality, is the biggest advantage over the Raytheon and Boeing ramjet projectiles, which have a higher charge in the warhead. Since the ramjet has an integrated engine, it has the disadvantage of having a reduced combat charge and is not as powerful as a normal artillery round. For example, the charge weight of an ordinary 155mm high explosive grenade is about 11kg, while the charge weight of a ramjet is only 5kg, which has seriously affected the explosive power. This BAE ammunition is different, as it still adopts the same stock design as conventional artillery shells, its charge weight will not be lower than that of conventional ammunition and may even be higher. And without the use of complex ramjet technology, it should be able to achieve a cost closer to that of existing conventional artillery shells. In this regard, Garrett Lacolade, vice president of BAE Systems, said, this successful test confirms that our long-range subcaliber projectile has a higher lethality. It has double the range of existing guided artillery rounds. We are confident that this ammunition is the ultimate ammunition for the US Army's advanced body barrel gun, the M1299. If BAE Systems has really achieved the above points, low cost to achieve ultralong range without compromising the destructive power of the ammunition, then it can be said that Boeing and Raytheon have been considered early out of the competition. However, the most important technical details have not yet been revealed, so whether it is really as perfect as BAE described, it is necessary to wait for further observation. Well, that's all for this issue. What do you think of BAE's subcaliber artillery long-range projectile with enhanced lethality? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments section.